Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! It looks like someone's fallen over. What's... There's an incident near the speaker's chair there. I don't know whether it's... Uh, was it... Yeah. Let's have a listen and see. Maybe we can ask our producer who's um, there, if he can find out what's going on. It looks as though there might have been some sort of altercation just in front of the speaker's chair there. Right. So, is the, is the mace going to be taken off the table? I imagine so. Treat you and what you have to say with respect, and I recognise that our presence is desired by Her Majesty the Queen's commissioners. They are doing what they believe to be right, and I recognise my role in this matter. Wait a minute. Well, I couldn't care less whether you like it or not. <laughs> No, no, I'm, I'm more than happy if people have got the basic tolerance and manners to listen, they'd hear. I'm perfectly happy, as I've advised others, to play my part. Uh, but I do want to make the point that this is not a standard or normal prorogation. It is. I don't require any assistance from you, Mr. Stevenson. You wouldn't have the foggiest idea where to start in seeking to counsel me on this important. I require no response from you. I require no response from you. I require no response from you, young man. I require no response from you. Get out, man. You will not be missed. Please do your job. I was the point. I had already made the point of people have the manners to listen, which they haven't. The right. uh, order the that I will play my part. This is not, however, a normal prorogation. It is not difficult. It is not standard. It's one of the longest for decades, and it represents not just in the minds of many colleagues, but huge numbers of people outside an active executive fiat. And of executive fiat, and therefore I quite understand, I've already said, that Black Rod I respect, and Black Rod is doing her duty, and the Queen's Commissioners are doing their duty, and I will play my part. But I completely understand where I can... It's nothing disorder. I don't require advice on order from you, Mr Stewart. You're a master of disorder, man. <laughs> I completely understand why very large numbers of members are much more comfortable staying where they are. Mr Stewart, if you don't like it, you're perfectly entitled to your view. I couldn't give a flying flamingo what your view is. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Nice to do your job. Um, John, just to jump in there, um, the Press Association... Um, have said that a group of Labour MPs um, held up signs with silence written on them, with one trying to hold on to the Speaker as MPs were requested to take part in the ceremony, because obviously they now move from the Commons to the Lords. Yes. Um, and our producer says that in the lobby, no one knows what's going on. They're just very confused. Well, it look, I thought it looked as though there was some sort of altercation in front of the Speaker's chair. Clearly there was. Now, just um, watching... Uh, some um, some Labour MPs appear to be gay. Most Labour and SNP MPs are boycotting this ceremony. They've obviously... And the shouts of shame. Shame on you. Yes. Mm. This is the most... Uh, we've, we have never, ever seen anything like this at a prorogation. Normally, it's a very staid, uh, mild-mannered affair. This is, this is uh, very controversial. The, the behaviour of... Uh, uh, the MPs here. We've never seen anything like this at prorogation. And we heard the speaker there. What was it he called it? And he... 
uh, an act of uh, executive fiat. I mean, the Speaker, uh, as we know, called uh, prorogation a constitutional outrage when he was still on holiday in Turkey. But the Speaker clearly has sympathy with the Labour MPs and uh, opposition MPs who are protesting. But those, most, those MPs who are heading down to the Lords are nearly all, if not all, Conservatives. Um, I'm, I thought I saw one or two MPs from the opposition side going. Um, well, we've got their backs to us. I recognise quite a few Conservative MPs there. But uh, that noise we're hearing probably is the noise from the Commons Chamber. Does, Mr. Does the Speaker usually give a speech? No, not like that. I mean, he's clearly... Did you hear, he, he, a moment ago he said, I couldn't give a flying flamingo for your views to one MP. I think it was... Uh, I can't remember which MP it was now. But he's been shouting at MPs today. Earlier today he said, like it or lump it to one MP. Uh, Baroness Evans um, reading um, Her Majesty's commission. Uh, it's just like the Queen's speech, but it, it basically lists what has happened in this session. Um, quite a lot uh, happening this morning. Um, apparently in the Commons there's a lot of singing going on. They're now going back to the Commons. Um, and uh, our producer Tom, who's in the central lobby, says that uh, there were protesters in there shouting shame and defend our democracy. And those protesters were escorted out by um, the police. Um, John, this is just extraordinary, isn't it? Yes. Um, what we, we should talk about the altercation. We thought there was an altercation in front of the Speaker's chair. Hannah Bardell, the uh, SNP MP for Livingston in Scotland, uh, has uh, tweeted some pictures. Well, what it shows is some Labour MPs, I can see what looks like Dawn Butler, Lloyd Russell Moyle, holding up bits of paper uh, to, and, and trying to stop the Speaker Lloyd Russell Moyle, I can see, lunging in front of the Speaker, trying to stop him leaving the chair. And obviously some uh, of the, uh, uh, the uh, badge messengers, as they're known, the attendants have intervened. Um, and then he, Mr Burko did, in fact, leave the chamber. I'm, I'm looking at these pictures now. Um, other MPs have described the unruly scenes. And yes, the singing. Labour MPs have been singing the red flag as they did in that famous night in the 70s when Michael Me Heseltine grabbed the mace. Uh, SNP were singing Flower of Scotland, and apparently Welsh Labour MPs then started singing Bread of Heaven. But it's all been very unruly, and uh, I'm sure as the uh, P MPs uh, tweeted pictures uh, become public, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people will think that uh, it's rather unseemly the way some MPs have behaved. So, real controversy here uh, as Parliament is prorogued. A protest by MPs in the House of Commons chamber. Angry words from John Major. Uh, Mr. So from John Burko, sorry, not John Major. We mentioned him earlier. Yeah. Uh, applause there. Look for Mr. Burko as he comes back. It's going to be interesting to see if there's um, a sign on his chair. There was earlier, there are lots of pictures of it. Being you see the two uh, attendants on the right. There's the bald chap with the beard and then the other bald chap. They're the ones who uh, intervened to stop uh, the... Um... What was going on? Home here. <laughs> I feel much more home here, sir, Mr Burko. <laughs> Well, I wonder the Tories might... Uh, normally a departing speaker gets a peerage, but... Who said uh, it was offered? That's a reference to what I was just talking about, I think. So then he is going to um, sit in the clerk's place at the table. Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. Mm. Are you sure? But, which is where the chairman of the Ways and Means sits when they're chairing the committee well, uh, of the whole house. That's right. Just wait the house. That the House has been to the House of Peers, where a commission under the Great Seal was read, authorising the Royal Assent to the following Act. <laughs> Parliamentary Buildings, brackets, Restoration and Renewal, close brackets, Act 2019. Yeah. I have further to acquaint the House that the Leader of the House of Lords, one of the Lords Commissioners, delivered Her Majesty's most gracious speech to both Houses of Parliament in pursuance of Her Majesty's command. For greater accuracy, I have obtained a copy and also directed that the terms of the speech be printed in the journal of this House. Copies are being made available in the vote office. The Commission was also for proroguing this present Parliament 
and the Leader of the House of Lords said, My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, by virtue of Her Majesty's Commission, which has now been read, we do in Her Majesty's name and in obedience to Her Majesty's command, prorogue this Parliament to Monday the 14th day of October to be then here holden, and this Parliament is accordingly prorogued to Monday. 14th day of October. Look at the mind in behind the door. Come on in. <laughs> See the Labour sides packed there, Mr Corbyn, John MacDonald, other members of the Shadow Cabinet there, and no Tories in the chamber at the moment. And they're still holding up those signs of silence. Yes. What a noise. I've never heard John Burko sound so unanimated, have you? No, he's, uh, he's got a face like thunder now. When you consider the events that have gone on earlier on today, he made that emotional resignation statement. He's looking round to see if there's any representative of the government, I think. I'm not sure there is. He's calling a clerk, I think. Yes, Labour and SNP. Oh, there are some Conservatives there on the left but not very many. There were only 14 peers in the chamber for the uh, ceremony in the, in the House of Lords. There's, there's, there's nothing compulsory about it, but you know, on these occasions, when prorogation takes place, if colleagues feel like toddling along this side to shake hands until we meet again, they're very welcome to do so. But it does mean sh shaking my hand, if you can bear that. <laughs> Mr Corbyn going towards the speaker, shaking his hand. So, having a word with Mr Speaker, we can't hear what they're saying. I think what's probably going to happen now is that lots of uh, uh, Labour MPs are going to shake the Speaker's hand by the look of it. Pat on the back for Mr Corbyn, from Mr Burko. Uh, Nick Brown, uh, the Labour Chief Whip. Uh, Ian Blackford, it looks like, next. And then John McDonnell, I think. And that's it, really, isn't it? Until October the 14th, yes. Monday, October the I mean, these, the 14th. This hand, these handshakes are going to go on for a long time. Mm. If every Labour MP is going to shake Mr Burko's hand, that's going to take a while. And quite a chat for, for Nick Brown, the uh, veteran Labour enforcer, chief whip under Tony Blair, Gordon Brown and now Jeremy Corbyn. A pass on the back for Ian Blackford too. This is all, uh, suddenly Mr Burko's a bit more convivial, his mood's a bit more convivial. He's uh, shaking hands with uh, these opposition MPs. Well, he must be absolutely exhausted. It's ten to two in the morning. Oh, he's got great stamina, as Mr. Boat. Was that a hug for John McDonnell? It was indeed. Yes. Well, Tories will be John... furious about these seats. They will be. Well, where are they? Well, I can't see. I don't think I can see any Conservative MPs. It might be one or two in the chamber, but not very many. 